Good morning or good afternoon. This lesson is going to introduce uh, two-dimensional linear inequalities. And we'll begin this by doing a quick review of one-dimensional linear inequalities. And I kept trying to make that a lowercase i, and for some reason the editor on this really wants to make that a, a capital letter i. Sorry about that. Uh, so we're going to try begin this by tying this into what we've already covered as well as a, a key concept about how a graph is related to an equation or inequality. Uh, so a one-dimensional linear inequality would be something like this. Um, that did not write very well. Let's try again. Uh, 2x plus 4 times x minus 3 is less than... I don't know, six. I am making this up on the fly, so who knows how it's going to work out. Um, this is one-dimensional because it only has one variable in it, and when you graph things in one dimension, you just graph them on a number line. So we would go ahead and solve this by distributing the 4. So 4 times x is 4x, and then 4 uh, times negative 3 there would give us negative 12. We combine like terms, so 2x plus 4x is 6x, then we would add 12 to both sides, getting 6x. Uh, remember, negative 12 plus 12 is 0, bring down the less than. 6 plus 12 is 18, divide both sides by 6, and I get x is less than 3. Um, so we, we covered this in Unit 1. You solve these exactly the same way that you solve uh, linear equations, except that you have that inequality, and you do flip the inequality if you multiply or divide by a negative. Now, when it comes to graphing them, they are graphed on a number line, and the only number that I required you to put on that number line was a 3, and this, of course, is x is less than 3. So numbers that are less than 3 are found to the left, and we run into this problem, it's all of these numbers over here, but we run into this problem where it, it's all the numbers up to the 3, but not including the 3. So we can do like 2, 2, 2.5, 2.9, 2.99, 2.9999999999999, but not the 3. And the way we indicate the 3 not being included is we use that open circle, and then we color in everything less. And the key idea there is that we shade in or color the solutions. And so we need to find a way to shade in or color or put a dot. Okay, we need to get more basic. You put a dot um, everywhere there's a solution. But we don't want to put a dot at the 3 because the 3 was not included in that. And, uh, and so we put the open circle there and we like shade everything to the left. And that's how we indicate it's everything up to the 3 but not including the 3. Now... I'm going to duplicate this. If we had the equal, less than, or equal, the way we would indicate that is we would put the dot at the 3, which would essentially color in the dot. And that that idea, it, I know I, it sounds like or probably feels like to you like I'm pounding this to death, but that idea is so important because that idea is how we get the graph of a line. We get the graph of a line by putting infinite dots uh, that satisfy or make the equation true. So to get this into two dimensions, I typically do a big group exercise um, that is of dubious use um, in terms of uh, what students get out of it. So I'm going to, to kind of walk you through the idea with a lot of scratch work. If you're taking notes, I want you to put your pencil down and I just want you to watch and listen for the next several minutes to get an idea of what exactly is happening here. So what I have here is my coordinate plane. This is an inequality in two dimensions, and I know it's two dimensions because I have the x and the y, and when you go to graph something in two dimensions, instead of just being on the number line, 
where you would just graph that one dimension of the line. Now you're on the coordinate plane where you have the X and the Y axis. That's your two dimensions and you can tell from um, the sheet here or the equation or inequality. Mm. Sorry, I said sheet because I accidentally clicked a button on my iPad that added a sheet. <laughs> um, Oh dear. Anyway, um, because it's got the X and the Y. But math is consistent and the principles and the key ideas still hold. So that very basic idea of we put a dot wherever there's a solution or we shade or we color uh, wherever there are solutions, that doesn't change just because we've turned into two dimensions and are working on the coordinate plane. So what I'm going to do on this next page here is I am going to take our, my inequality, so that's y is less than 2x minus 4, and I am going to try out several possible points. I'm going to try the point 0, 0. I am going to try the point 1, negative 2. I am going to try the point 4, 2. Uh, and then uh, what else am I going to do? I'm going to try the point 3, 2, and I'm going to do two more. I'm going to do the point 3, 0, and the point um, negative 1, negative 2, I think. No, I'm going to do negative 2, 2. Okay, I'm looking at the notes. Now, this I have done in the past as a group activity where I'll split the class into groups and have each group do one. Um, for my face-to-face -face classes, we might still do that. I might split you guys up. I don't know. But for the class that is watching the lesson from home where you don't have groups and for anybody making up the lesson or re-watching the lesson after being absent, um, I'm going to work through this. So the way I'm going to test this out is to take each of these points and plug in the X and plug in the Y and see if it is true. Again, it's about the solutions. The solutions are the things that make it true. So for this first one, I'm going to plug in Y is 0 and X is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. And 0 minus 4 is negative 4. And I end up with this statement, 0 is less than negative 4. That is a false statement. And so the point zero, zero is false. I'm going to come back over to my graph here. And because it is false, I'm going to put like a little X as false. That was kind of bad. Let me see if I can make a better X. Okay, so zero, zero was false. Let's try the point 1, negative 2. So in the point 1, negative 2, y is negative 2, x is 1, and I end up with 2 times 1 is 2, and negative 2, uh, and 2, sorry, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Now, I want you to pay close attention to this. This is that negative 2 and negative 2 are equal, um, but it says negative 2 is less than negative 2. Well, negative 2 is less than negative 2 is false. It's not less than itself. So the point 1, negative 2 is false, and I'll come over here, 1, negative 2. I'm going to put a little x there to indicate that that is false. Moving on, we're going to try the point 4, uh, two. So in this case, y is equal to 2, and x is equal to 4, and 2 times 4 is 8, and 8 minus 4 is 4, and now I'm getting something that is true. I am getting 2 is less than 4, which is true. Coming over here, I will use a different color, so th that was the point uh, 4, 2. So I'm going to come over 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up, and I'm going to put like a dot there. So like a dot instead of an X. Now let's look at the point 3, 2. So Y is 2, 
and x is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 4 is 2. And now I've got a similar situation as I had right here with the 2, negative 1, in that I get 2 and 2, which are equal, but 2 is not less than 2. And so that is actually false. So the point 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, that is false. So I have a point that is true right near a point that's false. Next one is the point 0, 3. So in this one, um, y is 0 and x is 3. So 2 times 3 is 6 and 6 minus 4 is 2. 0 is less than 2. That is true. So I have my second true point. Uh, the point 3, 0 is true. So we'll come over here. And the point one, two, three, zero. So that point right there is true. Last one that I have on my list here is the point negative two, two. So in this case, y is two and x is negative two. And so I have uh, two times negative 2 is negative 4, and negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. 2 is less than negative 8. That doesn't even make sense. A positive number is not less than a, a negative number. And so that one is just straight out um, false on that. So negative 2, 2 is a false. So negative 2, 2 it right there is a false. So um, what we did here, and, and you can get the idea of what we're doing. We're taking locations on the coordinate plane, and we're plugging the x and the y into the inequality and, and seeing whether or not those points are solutions to that particular inequality. And you get the idea that there's an infinite number of points we could pick. Um, there's an infinite number of points with integers we could pick. And then, of course, we, we've got decimals and fractions and all kinds of stuff that we could plug in. Um, and what we're seeing over here is that some of these points are false and some of the points are true. Now, this could be a very, very long, tedious process. We'd like to come up with some kind of pattern to whether or not the, uh, the points are going to be true because we don't want to go through plotting like these infinite number of points. Um, so what, what I would do if we had like a ton of time is we would start to plot more points and what we would notice is that points over here would be true, points over here would be false. And what we're looking for is the dividing line. Where's the dividing line between the points that are true and the points that are false? And the answer to that are these points here, okay, where we ended up with things that were equal. Okay. This one was the one I think that ended up being like negative two is less than negative two. And this one was two is less than two. Um, those are the points where we ended up with it being equal. Okay. And everything on, and let's go back over here and see where those points are. Those two points are right here. If you were to connect those points, Everything on this side of the line would be true. Everything on this side would be false. And so I'm going to recap that verbally for you. We have points that are true and points that are false. And the dividing line between the points that are true and the points that are false are where the actual line is. Now, in this case... Those points that were on the line ended up being false. And the reason they were false is because um, like 2 is not less than 2 and negative 2 is not less than negative 2. But if I were to change this problem slightly and I were to make it less than or equal to... Then all of a sudden, those two points that were false would now be true.
Okay. Um, because now you would have the equal to, and of course, two is less than or equal to two because it would fall under the or equal to part. So here's the key idea. We need to like summarize this up. When graphing the inequality y is less than 2x minus 4, the line y equals 2x minus 4 forms, that's the word forms, a boundary. Points on one side are true which means that we will shade them. Okay, so points on one side of the boundary are true and those are shaded. Points on the other side are false and are not shaded. And that goes back to that key idea about we shade the points that work. Now, here's the last little distinction. If the line y equals 2x minus 4 is not included, it is dashed. If it is included, it is solid, just like the normal y equals 2x minus 4. Okay, let me see if I can, um, can summarize that. So if you're, um, whether we're doing this in class or whether you're at home, um, I want, we're going to stop right here and I want you to take a picture of what I have summarized here. Okay, so the key idea here is that we always shade the solutions. If the line is a part of the solution, meaning you have that equal to, then you will shade the line. It'll be a normal, ordinary line where you color in all the points. If it is not included, then you don't include the, the line. So remember, like if we had something like x is less than 3, we need to mark the three, but not include it. And we do that with that open circle. In a two-dimensional graph, if we have y is less than 2x minus 4, we have the same concept at play. We have a boundary that we don't want to include. And so in this example, the way that you show the boundary but don't include it is you would um, do a dashed line and then you would shade all the points that work. So I want you to compare these two because they are the same thing just in two dimensions instead of one. In this one, you keep it unshaded and you color everything to one side. This is the two dimensional equivalent. You keep it unshaded and the way you do that is by dashing the line and then you shade everything on one side. In this example, if you decided to include it, you would color it in. In this example, if you decided to include it, you would color it in, okay? Same concept, just extended to another dimension. So on the next slide, I'm gonna give you the steps for graphing a linear inequality. Okay, here are the steps for graphing a linear inequality in two dimensions. I hope that this is spaced right. It looks fine on my iPad, but sometimes when I play back in the video, it is off. So I am going to read it out loud if there is something that is not showing on the actual slide. Um, fill it in and I'll pause to, to allow you time to do that. Um, so first thing you're going to do is graph the boundary line. That is the, similar to this process on the number line where you put in the boundary 
Okay, you kind of plot where the boundary is. Use a dashed line if the boundary is not included and use a solid line if the boundary is included, just like a normal equation. So one dimensionally, that's your equivalent of a dashed line, like you put, or some people say dotted line, but um, where you have to mark where the boundary is, but you don't actually want the boundary to be included. Um, and then you use a solid line, like a normal line, if the boundary is included, and that would be in your one dimension, like coloring it in, and it ties into that idea that you always color in whatever the solutions are. Now, just like with a one dimensional inequality, one of the sides needs to be shaded. Uh, so with the one I have, we were doing like less than you would shade to the left or greater than you shade to the right. So next step is to shade the side of the boundary that represents the points that work. There are two options for this. One way is to choose a test point, often the origin. Remember that the origin is the point zero, zero. And remember, zero is Miss Taylor's favorite number. So you plug in the zeros to see which side works. If zero, zero works, then that's the side that you shade. If zero, zero is false, then you shade the other side of the line because one side works and the other side doesn't. So it's like you're picking a test point like over here. If this side doesn't work and you get something false, then the only place you can shade is, is the other side. Um, the second option um, works if the equation is solved for y. So if you've graphed your equation from some other form, like standard form, you actually can't do it this way, but usually it is solved for y. Um, you shade above for greater than and below for less than, and hopefully that makes sense to you if you have um, your coordinate plane and you have a line on it that above, like above the line, okay, that's where, where Y is greater, so greater, above, less, lower. Choose the option that is best for you. Neither one of these options is like better than the other. What's important is that you're choosing a way that makes sense to you and that you will be able to do accurately. I'm going to do one example to show how these steps um, play out, and then you need time to practice it on your own. So this is the example that I'm going to do. I'm going to graph the inequality. Um, be good if I put the x in there. Y equals negative one half x plus three. So step number one is graph the boundary line. Use a dashed line if the boundary is not included and use a solid line if the boundary is included. Well, because I have an equal to here, okay, if you were asked to graph just, just the equal to, Okay, nobody it randomly does a dashed line for just the equal to. So if it says greater than or equal to, the or equal to means that the line itself is a solution and so it will be solid. So the equal to means solid. I'm going to graph this using the shortcut. So the y-intercept for this line is positive 3. And then the slope for this line is negative one half. So I'm going to count down one and right two from my y-intercept. So down one, right two puts me right here. Here if my pen will write. There we go. And that's all I need to graph the line. And it is a solid line. I recommend doing your work in pencil because uh, sometimes we go into autopilot and we just do a solid line and then realize afterwards like you're reading it and you're like, graph the boundary line. And then you read this part and you're like, oh, crud, like it was supposed to be dashed. If you're using a pencil, then you can just like do this little number where you can erase a piece of it and go ahead and make it dashed if you didn't have it dashed so and it's hard to do with a pen. Um, now we're going to graph the shade in one side of it. We'll shade in the side of the boundary that works. I like to use option two. I think it's quicker. So um, first I have to make sure the equation is solved for y. Remember that means y is by itself, which it is. Um, and then because it's greater than, I will shade above. Okay, which is this. So what you can do to figure out which side is above is put your cursor or your pencil, cursor, your pencil on the y-intercept and then just go up. Like that's above 
So that tells me this is the shade uh, side that will be shaded. And I'm done. That's the end of the problem. Now, for those of you that have trouble with solving stuff for Y, or you have trouble determining which way is above or which is below, or you have trouble like looking at it and saying this is a greater than symbol or this is a less than symbol, I'm going to show you the other way to do it. Um, the other method is to choose a test point. And I strongly recommend that you would use the origin if possible. The only time you can't use the origin is if the line goes through the origin. If the line goes through the origin, I would pick either the point right above it, right to the right, or the point one one. Okay, it's not gonna go through all four of those points, okay? Um, so I would pick like zero one or one zero or one one would be my backup points. Um, but zero zero is not on that line. So I'm going to do some work over here and plug in the point zero zero. So zero is greater than or equal to negative one half times zero plus three. Zeros are awesome. Uh, negative one half times zero is zero, and zero plus three is three. And I end up with this statement, zero is greater than or equal to three. Well, certainly zero is not equal to three, so you know, so much for that. And zero is not greater than, so this is false. What that means is that where the origin is, that's the false side of the line. All the points on this side of the line are going to be false, which means that this is the true side of the line. And remember, we always shade in the points that make the equation or inequality true. So that would be the side we'd shade. So you can do that either with the test point, okay, which is not a big deal, especially if you pick zero, zero, or you can recognize that this is greater, and so you're going to shade above. Either is fine. Next up is a chance to get some practice.